So, hello, my name is Thomas Kuhn. Um, for me, it's the third time at SLE, and I'm happy to present now basically one of the results of my ongoing work within my PhD thesis within the research training group on role-oriented software infrastructures. So what does this mean? So the, the underlying motivation uh, underlying this research training group, there are three main challenges for current and future software de development. One issue is the increased complexity. Yeah, now we have systems, we have standards already defined that are tremendously huge up to a scale that it's almost impossible for one person to develop such a thing from scratch. Yeah, we need some way to modularize our development process and further improve our development process. Another problem is the rate of change. Yeah, from the early mainframe systems that were set up and annually refurnished and maintained, we are now arrived at a point where our distributed applications are changed on an hourly basis. Consider Netflix or Facebook. All these applications make changes not just per day, but per hour. How to keep up with these changes? How to have a flexible modeling notion, a flexible software development paradigm to cope with this? And another problem is the longevity of our system. There are still mainframes out there. And when they fail, they fail hard. So what we want to approach is we want to look how the notion of roles can help to cope with these changes. Yeah, we want to use roles to facilitate separation of concerns on the modeling level and also in the programming language. Yeah? And we also want to be able to have a more flexible domain model that can be adapted and changed easily. And last but not least, roles can also enable updating a running system, a running application. Yeah? For now, for the talk, I only have a short amount of time. I will only focus on the first two and only give a brief introduction. The main question now is, what are roles? When I go around, each of you will give me a different answer. So within my thesis, I need to have a clear definition. So I came up with, uh, by identifying the three natures of roles that were attributed by the different um, approaches I found in the literature. Yeah, the most prevalent notion is the behavioral nature of roles. When I play a role, I behave differently. I'm now a speaker, I speak up. Yeah, obvious. Yeah, the relational nature states that roles are usually modeled as named places at the end of relationships. There we all know them. Since ER in 76 and UML later on. What this actually means is that when I play a role, the role of the speaker, I'm in a relationship to each of you. You are my audience. Each of you plays the role of my audience. Then, last but not least, there's the context-dependent nature. Yeah, roles can capture context or collaboration-dependent behavior of an entity. Yeah, we are now at the conference, and now I'm a role as a, as a speaker. So the context of my role is this conference. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to talk about the speaker without talking about the overall conference. So if you look at the different approaches that are out there, they can be grouped according to, to these three bubbles. So I have some approaches, modeling languages. Uh, for now, I will focus on modeling languages. Um, yeah, that favor and look just at the behavioral nature of roles. Other approaches, like Ludwig from Fritz Steinmann or ORM2 von Halpen, um, focus on the relational nature of roles. Yeah, and there are some approaches that try to combine the context-dependent nature and the behavioral nature, yeah, and they define con the notion of contextual roles, but omit the relational nature. Yeah, and last but not least, there are several notions that try to combine 
also the relational and the context dependent nature. So what I presented last time when I was at SLE, I wanted to present a unifying model, a model that can capture all of these relational languages. So the problem with all these languages is there's no common understanding of modeling languages. And I want to understand why. And to do that, um, I looked into the different features of the different languages. And what I found is that not just only few languages actually fully support all the different natures of roles, but only really few have actually support for their language. So that's why I'm here. Last time I showed you how to have a formal model for this center point that supports all the natures of roles. What I now want to uh, show you is a tool that allows you to create such models so that each of you can look at me and look, download the tool and then think, okay, now I want to so model something with roles. Yeah? And a modeling language is not useful without tool support. So in addition to this uh, modeling editor, I also have a code generator that first of all generates a formal representation of the model I presented last time, as well as source code of a very lightweight library approach that facilitates a role-based programming language. So this is a model of a banking application. So here we have a financial institution, we have consultants <coughs> and customers. Yeah, we have a separate entity, a transaction, and this encapsulates the process of transferring money from one account to another account. Yeah, here these boxes are denoted compartment types. These are the objectified collaborations. With this, we can talk about context or situations or a process or teams as an object teams and so on and so on. Yeah? To model this, um, the graphical notion, the graphical representation was tailored for lightweight examples. So for modeling editor, uh, you need to um, need to make some adjustments to the language. So now we have two levels of the language. So on the first level, on the top level, level, um, you specify natural types, yeah, persons for instance, here, companies, and also compartment types. And then you specify which natural type can play which role in which compartment type. Then on this top level view, you ha basically have a bird's eye view on your application. You have to see the different collaborations, the different things that are going on. But you can go in each of these um, um, each of these compartments and look into them and then get a focus view of this compartment where you can focus on the individual interaction you want to model. Yeah, here we model a transaction from a source to a target account. We can specify the relationships between the two roles and further constrain, uh, specify constraints between the entities. Yeah. In the end, um, when you're in this focus view, you should really focus on the interaction you want to handle and model. Yeah, in the end, um, oh. in the end, the idea is that each compartment can be reused also for another uh, purpose. Yeah, this transfer is a money transfer. It's not limited to be used by the bank as it's shown in the model, but can be used in another different setting in a different financial institution. So the overall architecture, um, so it's based on Eclipse. It's based on the GAF framework and the Eclipse modeling framework. It uses the Epsilon translation language um, to facilitate the separation of the graphical model of the graphical model and the compartment raw object model, which is an EMF representation of the formal model I've presented last year. And in this way, we can separate all the layered specific stuff, all the bandpoints and rectangles, 
and have a clean semantic meter model. Yeah, from this meter model, we can build our two suit. So we not just have framed as a graphical front end for this meter model, but also the textual syntax um, built in the tool Trommel. And currently, what perfectly runs is the translation to the role-based language scroll and the formal language crum. We are currently working on a representation into a, a description logic, um, ALC, ALC. This is a, a special kind of description logic developed within our group. And we also can generate um, a data definition um, description that can be passed to a role-based database that is also developed within our group. So there are only a few limitations. Um, first of all, I don't support that roles can play roles. This has a philosophical um, implications, if I would allow that. We should discuss this by a beer or a couple of them. Yeah, and currently we only support constraints that are local to a compartment, but I also have an idea how to include them um, into the graphical representation because in the formal language it's also possible to specify them. So in the end we have a role-based modeling language that is augmented with a readily usable tool set so that each of you can at least try out to look into role-based modeling and get the feel of it and maybe you like it. Okay, if I have time I can show you the demo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One minute. One minute. That's too cheap. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't work. So, okay. So here we see the tool. Yeah, we can step in. We can create roles and do stuff and change things. And yeah, if we yeah, just for now, whenever we change something, um, the corresponding meta model is generated here, indicated with the .crom file, and then we can hit generate, we either generate scroll code, yeah, yeah, it was already there, and also can generate the formal Chrome code, yeah, and then investigating this, uh, reload, um, you basically get a representation so in one of the reference implementations of the formal model and for Scala you get um, basically method stubs. So you need to implement the behavior, yeah? Currently the tool has no way of specifying the actual role-based behavior. I have an idea about that but I don't have so much time and funding for all of this. Okay, so uh, last but not least, I also have a version where all these methods are filled in. For the details, um, this uh, belongs to, uh, or this language is part of Max Leuthäuser's research topic. So um, I can only show you and discuss brief bits of this. So, crap. Why is everything here? Okay, there it is. So, first of all, uh, let's look at the Scala. So, it uses the simple build tool. And Basically, you can see that uh, the different transactions are performed and executed with respect to the corresponding roles. So 
not much to see here. And, and here, basically, we can execute the Python script. And it states, yes, the model is well formed and the constraint model is also complying to the model. Okay, thank you.